This is Just a Thought, a podcast for parents ready to change their mind and change their lives. This is Christina Stead, and this is episode number 49. Hate being a mom? Good morning. Can you hear my... We got a new kitten. You might be able to hear her mewing in the background. I think she's having a little separation anxiety. This is our second day with her. So anyway, she is so cute. She's white and she's got blue eyes and she's very social and cuddly. It's a lot of fun. (laughs) So if you hear the meowing, that's what's going on. (laughs) Okay, let's jump right into this. Most of us at some point find ourselves doing something we hate, right? And many times the things we're doing are things that we don't plan on quitting. Being a parent, for instance, most moms and dads I know have hated it at some point or dreaded something about it at the very least. But for most of us, no matter how terrible it is, we don't ever consider relinquishing our title. We're going to keep on doing it even though it's so hard. So what can we do when what we're choosing to do is also something we think we hate? First off, there's nothing wrong with hating something and doing it anyway. But if hating it and doing it anyway is driving you crazy and feeling terrible, then it could be really helpful to do some thought work. And this can look like a few things. First, working on accepting where we are and feeling our feelings matters. When I try to run and hide from my thoughts, they will always find their way back to me. So to just acknowledge them really makes a lot of sense. This episode is called Hate Being a Mom. So I really want to focus on that circumstance for a minute. I call it a circumstance in this situation because although I hate being a mom as a thought... The fact that one thinks it is sometimes a circumstance. I have the thought, I hate being a mom, written out in that way is a circumstance. So I can look at this thought and play with it a little. To play with it, we go back to where we started and really look at the thought directly. If I have the thought that I hate being a mom and can't do this anymore or don't want to do this anymore, this of course being mothering my two children, and I get super honest, I don't have to do it anymore. I could choose to leave, right? I'm not saying that's what I will do. But when I look the thought in the eye and I'm more honest about it, I can see that not doing it anymore is an option, which is amazing because then it becomes a choice. And when I see I have a choice, I am in control of that thought. Now, I get to decide why I'm making the choice to live my life doing this thing I currently feel like I hate and if I want to keep doing it. I don't have to do it. I really don't. Am I committed to continuing to keep it in my life? Now, for most of us, when we're told we don't have to do something that we really believe that we have to do, we're like, well, yeah, I don't have to do it, but I, but I kind of do. No, you absolutely don't have to. If there is anyone in the world who has given up whatever it is that you're choosing to do, then it's a real option for you to give it up too. So if we're talking about being a mom, we could get on a plane, go somewhere else, start a new life. It is an option. But for most of us, our brains flip and we start remembering why we do want to do this, why we actually want to be mothers. We want to be part of our children's lives. We want to know them and love them. We want this experience. We want to care for our children and teach them and love them. (laughs) Can you hear her purring? Hey, pumpkin. Hey, So this might seem silly, but this exercise is important in loosening up some of the things that we think are fact and circumstance, which are not. When we see how much agency we actually have and intentionally choose things with that agency, we empower ourselves to use even more of that God-given gift, which is awesome. It's my thought that there is a right and wrong and that God does have a beautiful plan full of glory and possibility for each of us. With this thought, I believe we each have the light of Christ that illuminates a joyful path for each of us. But sometimes we darken that path with our natural mind or our judgments of ourselves and others, our comparison, and when we start giving up our agency and making our circumstances rule our lives. When we can clean all that up, we each have a pretty good idea of what is useful and joyful for us, and we see all the choices we do have. So at this point in the thought work, we can decide if we want to keep doing what we're doing or pull an Elsa and let it go. (laughs) This is such an important decision for all of us. So many of us are doing things we don't want to do that 
we actually really don't want to choose to do either. For example, I used to say sorry a lot. I thought I should say sorry a lot. I would say sorry for everything. Sorry I'm late. Sorry I have something I want to say. Sorry I feel the way I do. Sorry I'm going to do this. Sorry I need this. (laughs) I realized at one point I was lying. I was overusing sorry and saying sorry about things I wasn't sorry about or I didn't want to be sorry about. If I wanted to commit to never being late, I could totally do that. But sometimes I make other things more important than being on time, like sleeping a little longer or visiting with someone a little longer. Those things are a higher priority to me sometimes than being on time. And I don't need to be sorry for my choice. But realizing that has been helpful for me. I also realize that often I can choose to be on time. I just need to choose a little discomfort in getting up sooner than I might want or going to bed sooner the night before, or cutting a conversation short that I'd like to continue. So now if I'm late, I don't always say, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened. I know what happened most of the time. And sometimes I choose to apologize if I made someone wait and I feel that wasn't fair to them. But other times I don't. I choose not to be sorry for my feelings most of the time. I choose not to be sorry unless I truly feel sorry for showing up differently than I want to. But I'm not sorry for being me. I'm not sorry for what I need. So... I let some of my sorry go, and I find saying thank you often works just as well as saying sorry and sounds a lot better. Thank you for waiting for me. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for helping me. Another thing I chose to let go of recently was homeschooling my children. Last year, due to lots of reasons, we chose to have them go to public school, and it was one of the best decisions we've ever made. Until last year, I didn't even consider it an option, but I've realized that only I can meet my needs, and if I'm not taking care of me, it's on me. So I let that part of my life go for a while. I personally believe that homeschooling and parenting are intertwined, so even though I delegated out the teaching of reading, math, and typing, I kept lots of other parts of homeschooling my children when I worked in the classroom with them or taught them life skills at home or how to pray or read scriptures. There was still a lot of teaching going on last year in our home, but I chose to delegate out a part of it that someone else could do and I chose not to do. It's funny how often my thinking goes from all to nothing when generally all I need to do is tweak a few little things and it changes the whole experience. But doing this thought exercise opens up the possibility that maybe being a mom or a stay-at-home mom or a homeschool mom or anything that I'm having a hard time with could look different than I think it needs to look. Maybe just a little tweaking is needed to change things up. So after we decide what to let go of and what we want to keep doing and have our own back in doing it, whether it's being a parent, going to church, going to school, working, not working, eating a certain way, not eating a certain way, staying married, staying single, (laughs) etc. It's often fun and useful to either work on changing our thought about it or just accepting the 50-50 of life. The part of life that's just going to be hard, and we're going to do it anyway. So during this part, I like to stay curious. What if I believe that it's possible to create an experience I do want? Again, just like the other things we've talked about, I bring my brain with me no matter what circumstance I'm in. So even if I change my circumstance, I'll still likely feel the same way because I'm still thinking the same thoughts. So what do I want being a mom to look like is a useful thought for me. How do I want to feel as a mom? What thoughts will bring those feelings I want right now? For example, doing laundry is something I've said I hate doing before, but I've done this work about it and I realized that although I can delegate doing laundry out, doing laundry is actually something I want to keep doing. I would rather go get a pedicure at this point than pay someone else to do my laundry for me. I would rather do it than ask someone else in my family to do it although sometimes they do it themselves anyway, and that's great. But often, for the biggest part, I do it, and I've made it a lot more enjoyable for myself. I like to call up my mom or my aunt or my grandma or my brother or my grandpa, and I say, will you help me do my laundry? And then we talk while I fold the laundry and put it away, or I listen to a podcast or life coaching or the scriptures or a conference talk, which, speaking of, I choose to let myself be okay listening to whatever I feel like in that moment and being okay with it. I used to have a lot of guilt over listening to anything other than conference talks or the scriptures, but I've chosen to believe that I want all of it in my life, the podcasts and life coaching and the scriptures 
and the conference talks, and I have plenty of laundry and plenty of days to listen to both. I've also found I like to fold my laundry in the kitchen instead of my bedroom, and that's been more fun for me too. So, I mean, that's just an example, right? We find ways to shake things up and make them more fun. The last thing I recommend to do is changing our thoughts, and it's really the last thing. I don't recommend it at first, because I think most of us have a lot of judgment about our thoughts that that make this whole process kind of slippery. But it is an option. If we want, we can get to a point where we can believe the complete opposite of what we used to think. At this point in time, I love being a mom. I haven't hated it for years. And a big reason for that is I did the thought work mentioned above. I accepted hating it. And I also decided I was going to stick to it anyway and take the challenge to make it fun. And you know what? It worked. Being a mom is super fun. So I hope this episode will help you lighten up some of the heavy parts in your life too and make them a whole lot more fun. This is Christina Stead. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and a disciple of Jesus Christ. He loves me. He loves you. And he loves us. This is just a thought. A podcast.